I've always loved reading. Last year, despite being in lockdown for over seven months and spending 14 days in hotel quarantine, I don't think I read a book from start to finish, actually. There is one. So going into 2021, I wanted to read more. One of the things holding me back was time, or at least how I was using it. I was doing a lot of endless scrolling on Facebook, on news websites, doom scrolling. But I think it was also because I'd got stuck in a rut of reading the same kind of book for years. Biographies, history, quirky travel books. And you could quote me saying, I don't like fiction. Which really is quite a strange thing for someone who makes fictional stories every day to say. So going into this year, I set myself a challenge to read more. Wait, did I set myself a New Year's resolution? Ew. I set myself a challenge to read 52 books throughout the year and we have just passed the halfway mark of the year and I've just passed the halfway mark of my reading challenge. So I thought it was the perfect time to take stock, see what I've learned and see what tips, tricks and recommendations I can give to you. So I've kept track of all 26 books I've read so far this year in a spreadsheet to see what kind of interesting patterns might emerge from the data. Things like where the author's from, what's the genre, how many pages long a book is, when the book was published. And not only has that provided some information to put into this video, but it's also helping to inform me on what books I want to read in the future, especially in the second half of this year. It didn't take me long into this challenge to realize that size doesn't matter. Reading big, long books can be daunting, and the last thing you want reading to be is a chore. I also realized that I'm the one setting the rules. So just because a book is long, it doesn't mean it's worthy. In fact, 15 out of the 26 books I've read so far this year have been under 300 pages. And that includes some of my highest rated books including The President's Hat, written by Antoine Lorraine, a really funny little book about coincidence and happenstance. Welcome to Country by Marsha Langton, an integral and important piece of literature that everyone in Australia and beyond should read. And The Co-Root by Meg Lukens Noonan, which is all about the tailoring of a $50,000 coat. Don't let page count dissuade you from reading. Read short books, read long books, read picture books. Sometimes the best story is told in a small amount of pages. Get out of your comfort zone. I lay on the floor to reflect being out of my comfort zone and I, I do really regret it because it, it does hurt. As I mentioned, I read a lot of biographies and history books and travel books. This year I pushed myself to get out of that comfort zone and read things I didn't normally read, including fiction. 16 books out of the 26 I've read so far have all been fiction. And I've also discovered some genres that I didn't even know I was interested in, like Western. One of the big things I've been able to take from the data I've collected from each of the books I've read so far this year is where an author is from. And so far from the 26 books I've read, my authors have come from five different countries. And that is something I really want to increase in the second half of the year. So I'm deliberately searching out authors from different parts of the world so I can read about different experiences and different lives and different stories to what I'm used to. So far though, I've read books from French Korean authors, Australian authors and Swedish authors and I've enjoyed them all. Diversifying your reading will not only help you to read more and discover new things that you enjoy reading, but will also help you to understand the world a little better. And I honestly don't know if there's a better thing you could do right now. There's nothing wrong with a guilty pleasure. Which is exactly what I thought when I bought Horror Store after I saw it on TikTok. <laughs> It is a horror novel set inside an Ikea ripoff and the whole book is designed like an Ikea catalog. Amazing. Treat yourself, get something you know you're going to enjoy. It's gonna make reading more a whole lot easier. Reading doesn't have to be expensive. You can go to the library or you can do what I've done a lot of this year and buy secondhand. We've been really lucky here in Brisbane because there's been this wonderful thing called the Lifeline Book Fest, which is a massive, massive, massive secondhand book sale. It takes over the convention center and you could spend days in there browsing through cheap books to bring home with you. They've also had a pop-up shop that I have been raiding big time to fill my year with books. And so far, eight of the books I've read have been secondhand. I was gonna buy these books for a lot of money in a bookshop and I stumbled upon them secondhand 
for a fraction of the price. And I'm so glad I did because A Gentleman in Moscow is phenomenal. And don't forget libraries. Although none of my 26 books so far this year have come from a library, I can say that my favorite book so far this year is about a library. In fact, it is the library book, which is all about a fire at the Los Angeles Public Library. And it was fascinating. Part history, part crime, part explainer of all things library. It was fantastic and I highly, highly, highly recommend. If you want to read more and get more enjoyment out of reading, try playing with form. Not every book you read needs to be a traditional 300 page soft cover New York Times bestseller. This year I've read graphic novels, puzzle books, coffee table books. This clue book offers a series of mysteries that need to be solved at the end of every chapter, just like the board game. And this was a beautiful, inspirational book filled with hope and love and wonderful artwork. Experiment and try different things. One way to definitely make sure you're gonna read a bit more is to set yourself a goal like I did. It doesn't have to be 52 books in 52 weeks. That's a big ask, but I've done it before and I felt like I could do it again. You might just want to set 20 books, 10 books, five books. No one else is judging. It's just you setting up something fun for yourself. And if you need somewhere to hold yourself accountable, Goodreads is a fantastic website and app that you can use to log all the books you're reading. It's where not only I'm keeping a track of all the books I've read, but I'm able to check on books that I want to read and see what the reviews are like, what people think of the book, if it's worth getting. One of the keys to reading more is finding the time to read. I read The 39 Steps and a lot of other books while commuting. I often read before bed. And yeah, why not in the bathroom? I recently watched a video where a YouTuber switched their screen time for a week to reading time and it changed their week up entirely. And I think it's a wonderful idea. Think about where you can reclaim some time to read, whether it's before bed or after work to de-stress or just to enjoy a moment by yourself. And judge a book by its cover. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but they design covers for a reason and it's to appeal to you. Whether it is quotes on the front of a book that tell you how good it is, or whether it is striking visual imagery, these things are important. If you look at that and you say, oh, that looks like something I wanna read, give it a shot. Not to mention plenty of covers of books are designed to look like other books. And there's a reason for that. Publishers know that if there's a certain type of book that will appeal to a certain type of audience demographic, they are going to try and want to get them by having a similar cover. So if there is a book you really like and it has a specific type of cover that looks a specific way, look for books that look similar. There's a good chance you're gonna find another book you like. Now that I'm halfway through my challenge, I'm looking back on the information I've collected from the books I've read so far, and I can see where I wanna go for the next six months. I definitely wanna read more books by female, trans, and non-binary authors. I wanna read more books from authors who come from different countries and different experiences. I've enjoyed reading fiction so much, I know, that I wanna read more fiction stories. And I'd love to hear any suggestions or book recommendations that you might have, so please leave me a comment so I can check them out. But ultimately, what have I learned so far in this experience? I have learned that I still love reading. And it makes me sad that I drifted away, especially over the last year. I've learned about new authors that I didn't know existed, and now I want to read more of their work. I have read about far off places that I would like to visit when I'm able to once again. And I've learned that reading is a much better use of my time than doom scrolling on a social media platform or pressing refresh on a news website. So that's what's been happening with me lately. If you would like to keep in touch, please hit subscribe. And if you have any recommendations for books to read or you've read any of these ones and would like to tell me what you thought about them, leave a comment below. While I'm distancing myself from Facebook, you can still find me on Instagram. And obviously, as mentioned in this video on Goodreads, you'll find a link to both of those down below. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I look forward to sharing more things that have been happening soon.